Welcome back to the Nightlife Podcast, Season 3. Guys, I want to apologize first for being away a couple of weeks. I know a lot of you have been missing me, but we're back. We're back. Hola, como estas? Um, so yeah, like I said, everybody here is going crazy. We, <laughs> we've been away for um, almost a month, actually. I have been moving, and with three kids starting a new school, uh, it's been crazy. But anyway, we're back, and I promised that it would be with a big bang, so... I'm proud to announce my guest today, Catalina Monsalve. Cata, welcome to Thank the you. Night Live podcast. Thank you for the invitation. It's, uh, I'm very proud. Awesome, awesome. Um, Cata um, is from Colombia. From right? Colombia. Um, we met a few years back. Uh, a few quite years. a few. <laughs> yeah, so few let's, let's not back. say exactly yeah, okay. a, a number. We don't want to go back there. <laughs> but um, we are actually today here from a venue in Wynwood, Miami, where if you, anybody who lives in the city who knows anything about going out and partying or whatever, knows about this venue. And if you're not from here and you're a tourist, there's most likely, you know, that this is one of your stops for sure. Uh, El Patio here in Wynwood. Um, very, uh, how, how long ago did you guys open? We opened in December 2015. 2015. So it's going to be our fourth year anniversary so, very soon. So four years, it, being able to become a legend, because El Patio is a, what we call in the nightlife, a living legend in the yeah, nightlife. Yeah, stable. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's a, it's a very short time to be up there, you know. Um, the good thing is that you guys not only have this, but you guys have also opened other other venues. I know there's something coming around the corner from what I hear. We have quite a few projects coming alone, all of them very well. Uh, we're about to open a location to more businesses down the street from us here at the patio. Okay. Uh, hopefully we'll open for Thanksgiving. Hopefully. If everything okay. goes well with the city and God help us, we'll be open. Awesome. So when you say we, who we. is we? Okay. <laughs> this is a question that I get asked a lot. This is a uh, this is a group called White Feather. Yes, Pluma Blanca. Correct. White Feather. It's uh, Nicolas Hoyos, right. which is another legend in the industry in Miami. Of course. Yes. If you guys you know have been around, you you guys know Nicolas. You've heard of. I don't, I don't know if I'm allowed to say Baru, but you know, uh, create one of the creators of the, the creator Baru of idea, Baru. creator of this idea, I suppose. Um, yeah, Macondo on South Beach was, was uh, you know, yeah. probably the first big thing. I started actually to work with Nicolas so just back in okay. Macondo, and we've been together since then. Right. So and I think I met you around that time, probably. Exactly. I did some things over we there. We don't yeah. want to say how long ago, yeah. but it's it's some time yeah, yeah, yeah. Few, back. A couple hours back. Yeah. So how do you go from working for Nicolas to being part of White Feather? And so I started with Nicolas Ojos and Macondo and then he opened many bars. I was always working side by side with Nicolas and we also had another partner. His name is Beto, Carlos Alberto Perez. Uh, he's, from Bo uh, he's from Bogota too. Okay. Uh, Nicolas is from Bogota and we always been working together directly or indirectly and right. when we were working at Baru uh, we all say let's get together and to build uh, the real uh, dream team. So right. we partnered up, we opened a different company and we felt that and Miami... Yes, they left me out of that equation. <laughs> I'm not part of the dream team equation, but it's all good. <laughs> By the way, we... Well, you have another dream team. No, thank God, is, we're doing great. Well, um, you guys are doing very well but too. Let, let me ask you a question. Um, because it's, it's something very common lately that um, people that are in the industry and are working with either a venue or a company, because it also happens with the promoter groups and all that. And usually, like a lot of people are seeing now an opportunity, I don't know, and starting new things. And you know, you have neighbors around here that also started doing a of few course, new things of also. Also uh, from Colombia, actually. Yes, yeah, so actually, when we first got the location of El Patio, yes. It was right at the transition of the Latin music, moving from the traditional Latin music to the reggaeton boom right. and the trap and, and all this new music that has been in the market for the past two years. So we came to El Patio on the right moment. And was it a lucky shot or was that part of the, the We whole embrace idea? The, the, the new trend. Right. We embrace it and it was a complete success. 
and I think uh, that's our biggest success in El Patio that we started, we changed the music, the, the traditional Latin music that we were playing before, we changed this tradition and we embrace a new right. upcoming uh, music industry and we put it in place and it's been successful since then and every time uh, in any change that the music makes, we'll embrace you gotta it. Take advantage exactly. of that. Exactly, we always it. take advantage of you that. Know what? One thing that I actually, I was actually talking about it a couple of minutes back. When I walked in here, I get that vibe. One of the venues we had for a long time, 13 years on, on, on Key Biscayne, was uh, Yahe, Southport, Madhouse. Um, and the vibe that you had there, uh, it was just the, the whole outdoor experience and, and the music being different from everybody else and doesn't have to be what's on the radio only and, exactly. and you know all those all those things building that dream team definitely and not only as the partners but the team itself i see the people you have working it's like a family we know. focus on human talent that's okay. our that's my main focus i'm in charge of the operation and my operation is 100 percent human talent okay whatever your talent is will make it work and right. we take the best of it. And, Correct. And when it comes to talent, what what are you doing different uh, with the music, DJs and talent in that sense? Because I've seen a lot of crazy stuff going on. We outsource DJs from either Latin America, anywhere. Correct. We're, we're bringing DJs from even from By the Haiti. way, guys, what you hear in the background is a DJ actually auditioning right now for a new job. For, uh, a, for a new place. That we're so gonna if you ever want a DJ to play for free, <laughs> No, we have auditions Get him to coming audition. up. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Nice. So, so I see you're doing, for example, you have one night with uh, CJs or uh, DJs or female DJs. So we came along with this concept that only female DJs because uh, female DJs are very trendy right now. Correct. So we put a team of female DJs together. It's the year of the women. Uh, <laughs> Not the year, the decade, let's say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> women power. Or the beginning. Exactly. Or maybe the end, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We are, we are already out there too much. So we put this team together of female DJs and it's been, uh, it's been crazy. It, and it's on Tuesdays. Right, that's, that's impressive. Which we, we build a party from pretty much scratch because we were having like our slow nights. You know, right. Monday, Tuesday is the day that we recuperate from the VC days. And, right. and you know, we need a break because for, starting from Wednesday is way too intense. So. Right. Monday and Tuesdays was always uh, a good time to to relax, to get the orders, uh, right, fix right. everything that we need to fix. But we came with this idea and we're being packed every Tuesday since then. Inventory Tuesdays, and now it's packed. Exactly. <laughs> oh, you know what? As a matter of fact, the first thing that I think you guys were put on the map hugely was your Sunday there. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, I know there was, Toto was a big part, you know, um, Yes, Power. actually, uh, this is an idea that I pretty much told Mr. Power that I was going to steal from him and I right. stole it. He's a Grammy nominated DJ and I mean, you know, it's... And he wanted to do a party in his studio with Sancocho and he wanted to be the DJ and play and then I told him, listen, let's do the party at El Patio and we do it every Sunday and Please I take care of the Sancocho. Sancocho on Google, go search what Sancocho it is. Sancocho Sundays, <laughs> it's yeah. our liquid brunch. Nice. So we open at 1 p.m. Uh, Mr. Power is the main character of the day. We feature the music of Mr. Power. He plays Electropico. Right. And we The party's have, been going on how long? Well, it's been pretty much since the time we opened. For, it's right. going to be... It's, for, it's been up for three years and a half. Wow. So I don't want you sharing sales numbers, but... About how many people you put in here on a Sunday? On a Sunday, we put in rotation 2,000 people coming in and out. So imagine that, having a Sunday that starts during the day, the based entire week. around a Sancocho, you know. <laughs> most most Latin countries understand what it is, but I know you guys in Toronto and you guys uh, in Australia have no idea what it is, so go search Sancocho. Um, but it's basically a stew, you know. And it's with the idea that you party hard on Saturday and in the morning you wake up, you go to El Patio and you have your recovery food. soup and right. you'll find and continue partying until 3 a.m. It's the best way to fix it. Exactly. So, so you build a Sunday, that's huge. Then you go on to, now 
you go into, I mean, Friday, Saturday is always a, kind of a given in a way, you know. It's, it's a given during the night, but we uh, found a way to build a day party. Right. So Saturday, we open at 2 p.m. and we have activities from 2 p.m. to close. Right. And it's also. I think you're the we, only venue that has just happened. We are the only ones who have a right. daytime party. All right. And um, I, I have mentioned before that there's a trend for that. People are not into going out so late. And I mean, in, exactly. in our time, which I'm not going to say when it was, people were a lot about after hours. Exactly. Now it's more about pre and going home earlier and getting up early the next day and even maybe another party the next day, but during the day. and. So it's it's a it's a weird trend. I'm not, I, I, and I always say it's not that the nightlife is dying. It's just that no, it's, it's evolving. It's, it's changing. It's changing, and people entertain completely different. Right. They like different things. They interact with the places completely different than before. Right. So you need to be ahead of the game. If you're yeah. not willing to serve the millennials right. now, you're gonna die. Yes, 100%. 100%. Um, actually, I think most listeners are uh, millennials. It's, it's really about giving them, you know, more to work with towards their dreams and their goals. You know, a lot of people uh, write to me about opening their own place. By the way, I want to say hi to our bartenders today, Uli and what's your name? And Catherine. They're going to be in the background. So, guys, please try to keep your eyes on us. All right. Um, Actually, yes. I need a drink. Me too. Is there anything that you guys, I'm sure there's many things you recommend, but what's going on here? What do I want? Um, since you like whiskey, I'll, I'll make you like a mojito with us. It has a little bit of peach naps, a sweetness into it. Let me try it. That. Let me and try then it. for you, something with vodka? And I want my favorite wine. The one you always give me. Your favorite wine? The Rosa Salva. Okay, for sure. Okay. okay. So, the reason she says since she likes whiskey is because I, I have been served by her a few times. <laughs> um, Quite a few. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you work with us also. Um, I do. I do the hiring on my side when I'm when, I, when casting, I'm on the ownership. The casting. Yeah, all the casting and all the picking. That, yeah, I don't take care of after. Um, I try to put that aside separately with with, the, with GMs, but. But there's something I look for the for the people that you know when I'm building the team, the family, and that's one of the reasons that I feel that you guys have that down pat is because I, I look around, I see the people that you guys have, and it's it is the people that I would be considering, um, and I also get some new surprises with people that I didn't know that you know that you guys discovered. <laughs> so, they, so it's cool. actually they grow up with us and they develop their business. Right skills and management skills too and we help them to grow personally yes. and business wise so that, too. that's what i was going to ask how do you keep them excited about el patio and the whole not just el patio but the other ventures other venues uh, first of all uh, paying the right money true uh, respecting the, the pay days because it's important that they get paid on time getting paid is good getting paid on time much better. We have a lot of flexibility with our employees. We let them travel. You know, when you travel, you know the world, you know what's out there, you come with new ideas. So right. if they want three days to go travel, go ahead and do your thing and come back whenever you want. Right. So that opens the minds and the eyes of everybody when you travel around the world. You can, right. you can tell for the amount of time I spend. Yes, I was going to say that. You're, you're usually <laughs> not here. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Every place we go, partners, uh, employees, bartenders, every person that travels here, we always have something to share right. and a new experience to implement, a new idea. I saw, I went to New York and I saw this activity at the table. Why don't we work it out here? Right. So it's, it's great. We embrace it. Right. And, and I think it's amazing because this job is a lot of times, a lot of hours. It's, yes. Our place, uh, our place specializes in high volume. Right. So it's super difficult to work here, very hard. So it's amazing that they can spend their free time in something that they really like. Yeah. You know what? I, I actually, a few years back, Nicolas came up to me and said, I have an idea. And he told me, 
um, it wasn't even, it, the, there was no Winwood happening yet. And he told me, what if we open something and you guys open something and we get somebody else and we and everybody yeah. goes and opens something and we create a new destination somewhere else. Um, at the time we were looking at downtown because downtown was dead and you know where Ceviche 105 is, mm -hmm. in that street, we were looking, talking about that street. And I was like, that is the smartest thing. Like seriously, just creating a new destination outside of Brickell because the rent was so high at the yeah. moment. It was, you know, all those things that you had to put into consideration. Winwood was not in the question at the moment, but then I guess <laughs> that's kind of what you guys have oh, created it was, here. It was hard at the beginning because when we wanted to open a Latin place, nobody yeah. believed that we were going to be success. success. Right, because, I mean, to put it out there, Winwood, the area where they're in, it's, it's, I don't know, it's trendy, it's, it's uh, I don't know, is it hippier? What is, it what? was kind of a hipster, but didn't have have a personality well developed so everybody got a little hectic about the idea and then when we show the business plan everybody at the end say no you know I'm not sure and well we finally found an investor right. and we open up the place and it's been a blessing right since the day one so but I think what we did here in El Patio we built an audience. It was really hard because we were the only ones bringing people to the area. Right. And we spent a lot of money in marketing. We spent a lot of money in alcohol because we gave away, you have no idea how many beers, how many alcohol oh. we gave away just to bring people to the Sunday area. What was that Sunday special you had for the beer? We had five beers for $5. So right. we have so a dollar beer. it was beer. a dollar beer, but you had to buy five. Well, we still have a dollar beer at the moment. But okay. when we opened, I was buying beer for $1 and almost 40 cents. Right. So I was losing 40 cents per beer. Correct. And now, Excuse me guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, uh, you go enjoy thank you. both of our favorite drinks. What is the name? This is a Queen Bee. As Jack Daniels, it is a sort of a mojito. And this is a Rosa Salva. Cheers. So, salute. So I apologize in advance for whatever's coming. Um, good. Wow, that's good. So we. So tiene mora. Peach nuts. There you go. Nice. Um, so okay. we spent a lot of money in marketing, and, and I was I was actually losing money for every beer that we were selling. Right. But in our in our brain, in my mind, was this is a marketing investment. It's not. A, I'm not losing money. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So, How many people came for that? Everybody was talking about it. Right now, we buy 600 cases of beer a week. And so now you set the price. And we buy <laughs> beer for 50 cents, 60 cents. The maximum I pay for a happy hour beer is 72 cents. Right. This is my highest Correct. price for for and happy hour beer. Yeah, it's 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 all about volume. Exactly. Yeah. So so yeah, you can do specials if you have the power to do specials. <laughs> um, definitely. I was gonna say something and now I, I just thought it, but the, the whole point is you brought this new audience to this exactly. area in general it was hard and now I hear a lot of people I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you I hear this probably once a month somebody come up to me and go hey I have some money I want to open a bar in Wynwood let's open it in Wynwood <laughs> you know I have no idea how many of people course. but when you, you have know. something successful everybody wants your yeah, yeah, the yeah. same success which I'm is just, fine 99% of the time, the person that's coming up to me, I'm just like, ah, oh, you know. And 99%. Let, let the ones that are doing the business right now do their thing. I actually had the, a bar here for a few months only, w one that you now acquired. <laughs> oh, two I blocks remember. Two, you know, right over here. Um, and I know you guys are going to open something there soon, which something I'm excited. Something huge. Yeah. I'm excited. I know that it was open and now it's closed and I, I drive by, I try to see what's there. I haven't seen anything. It's from 23rd it Street all the way to 24. To awesome. It's 10,000 square foot. Oh, you took the whole inside studio. We took the studio. whole thing. Nice. I can't wait. Oh my God, that's going to be amazing. So what do you, do you think that's, I mean, I don't know what the whole project is, what you're going to do in there. But do you think it might take away from what you have here? Or are you staying away from what this is completely? Well, like what I'm saying, we build an audience from zero uh, in Wynwood. And now we're sharing the audience that we build with everybody, everybody else. But I think since everybody's doing marketing at the same time, now the marketing efforts are 
way bigger than before and yeah. I think there's maybe three times the people that we were able to bring they're, they're out there right and I still believe that there's business for everybody oh yes and let me ask you truthfully the relationship with the neighbors right now and, and I don't mean next door next door in general because the competition has become in Wynwood difficult <laughs> no and it's become everybody wants to copy what you guys created it's correct I see it you know and it's that's one of the things I'm like I don't want to go there to be another you know like I walked in here and I felt like packing when I had uh, South Fork Madhouse in Kibis Kane and I was and I felt that vibe but I don't want to come here and try now that you guys have that I don't want to be the guy that comes and tries to take it you know what I mean like no, I'd rather you know, come here and say let me build something different and let's work together for the area exactly so. but it's difficult because like I said before if you have something good something successful people want the same success they want a big piece of you. it exactly the issue is they so, want most of it if we create the trend I love it I right. mean that we're doing something right Correct. it's just like a confirmation that our concepts are amazing right. that we have the best music it's a little bit annoying because when every time a neighbor open a bar they want to take our DJs they try to get our staff but we have everything under control so it's fine I'm gonna be up front with you we as we were recording camera shut off for a second and we said you know what while it comes back on we're gonna walk around and we're gonna check out something that's coming and she showed me around and I got to see something that's be coming soon to the area and if I were in the area <laughs> I, I mean, it's definitely, it's new, it's different. It's different. It's, it's I mean, it, it's, it's a scary venture. And you know what, that's one of the things that I would definitely always recommend to, to anybody that's getting into this. If, there, if you don't get a little bit nervous, I am then it's probably nervous. not a good idea, right? I'm very nervous. I mean, if it's, if it's something that you go like, oh yeah, I'm gonna open this and it's so easy. Like all yeah. those people that call me and say, I wanna open a bar in Wynwood because it's so easy. No, it's not that easy. It's not at all. Um, don't think that everybody's gonna be doing El Patio you know, numbers and, and having seven successful days in the week. You know, it's and no time for inventory. <laughs> but um, it's, it's all part of the whole, it, it starts from the beginning, exactly. from the creative process, the idea, putting together first the family that's going to be part of the business. Don't do it alone. That's one thing I always say. Don't get into this crazy business by yourself. That's I would definitely always recommend that you have partners. You need this. to have a purpose. You need to have a purpose yes. for everything you do. You need to have a storytelling in yes. everything that you do. And, and you need to bring the story out there and make Correct. it uh, authentic and make it your own. Correct, correct. So, all right, um, what do you see in the future? What is like that big idea, big goal that you guys have as a company? Well, we have already on the plate uh, big projects coming up for uh, the upcoming years. Uh, 2000. What year is this? 2018? 2020 is going to be big for us. We're opening an entertainment complex in downtown. Wow. You know, downtown Miami is also changing. Mm -hmm. It's a new upcoming area. Right. Uh, a lot of new, a lot of the well-known groups, entertainment groups right. are going to downtown right now. And we want to be the first group to go and, and bring the helps to the downtown revival. Yes. So hopefully I mean, every every city in, in this country it evolves around downtown. Exactly. And there's Except something, for Miami. Yes, my, there's something wrong about Miami's downtown. People think downtown is Brickell, and it's not. It's right next exactly. to it, and, you know. No, but it's happening now. There's uh, uh, two or three big groups for real estate that they already bought the properties. Yes. And they already are offering the properties for entertainment uh, opportunities, entertainment complex opportunities and we took advantage of one of the options and it's gonna be really awesome. really nice guys so all right so the, the one last thing that i want to take from this is if you want to get into this if it, this is something that you see in your future the possibility of of having a huge you know entertainment uh venue company um hospitality business um you know with different ventures 
or just maybe growing your own like promotion company, whatever it may be that you see in your future, remember one thing. What was your beginning in this whole thing, which is something we mentioned at the beginning? Your, the first thing you did when you started working in the nightlife? The first thing I did? Yeah. Make good relationships. Okay. Um, when I started working in uh, management positions, uh, focus on the talent of the employees. Okay. Uh, I think that's the key of everything. Right. If you have a good um, team, if you yeah. have people that back you up with your ideas, Correct. you're going to succeed. So focus on human talent. No, but I mean, your first position. Oh, my like, first position. Yes. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> so many <laughs> positions I did. Uh, server. Okay. So that, that's the whole point. Exactly. Starting from the bottom up is not a dream. It's real. And it's probably the only way to do it. If you start from the top, I'm going to see you, unfortunately, on your way down. It's unless you have a partner that's coming from the bottom. And the reason is you got to get to know this industry. The hospitality industry is just different. You got to understand everything from the bottom up. You got to, you know, bust some tables. You got to serve some clients. You have to, you know, be in that position where you have a boss that you have to listen to and, and follow and, and let be led before you can lead. So, you know, with that said, it, it, it's the sky's the limit. Everybody can do it if you put the effort the work behind it, you know, as a, as a matter of fact, while we were working, walking back over here, you know, you did mention that during that process, um, when, when you're looking for investors, you always find a lot of people that are interested in partnership, but they're more interested in not putting money, but just putting work instead yeah. of, you know, um, but, and some people may, you know, may say, oh, that's the easy way. I'm going to give you this because you're going to put in the work. I'm just going to stay home. But you guys chose the way of, no, no. no we know this, we, we understand to. this. It's gotta be our, you know, our creativity, our efforts. We under, we know what the whole idea is and what it is. We know the business and we yes. know Miami and we open Correct. so many bars, so we, we really know how to do it. So exactly. If so you're gonna invest your money, you need to trust us. 100%, 100%. And that's a whole other sub, I mean, another subject, talking about the money and the investment and all that stuff. Um, but we'll leave that for whenever I interview your partners. Um, although they probably hate that part more than anything, the, the creator guys. Um, but anyway, I wanted to give a shout out also to Nicolas and Beto, who are part of uh, White Feather. Um, and you guys have done an amazing job Thank here. You. What I see that you guys are gonna do with the, with the new location, I can't wait for it to open. I'm not gonna say dates or anything, but you can it's say coming. Yes, Very so, close. <laughs> you know, happy Thanksgiving, uh, guys. Start getting ready because this thing is coming, it's coming hard, um, and if now, I said at the beginning, if you're in Miami, you're a tourist, you gotta come to El Patio, I'm pretty sure <laughs> you're gonna have to go by Maya, Maya Miami. Me. There you go. You're gonna love it, you're gonna love it. So, Kata, again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so your much time. for invitation. Um, Huli left wherever she went. I don't know where she went. She left um, us. <laughs> but um, guys, I will see you next time. Don't forget to, uh, sorry about that, to get the book on Amazon. Follow the follow me on the Nightlife Entrepreneur. Um, you know, whatever. You know where the podcast is. Nightlifepodcast.com. All those things. And Kata, where can they find uh, El Patio and yourself? Huh? Um, your your Instagram. Oh, El Patio Winwood. Uh, El Patio Winwood. At El Patio okay. Winwood is the Instagram, Facebook as well. Right. And you can go to the website, elpatiowinwood.com. Just tell Siri, where is El Patio? You'll be found. So, thank you for coming again, and we will see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye.